Faith. The greatest victories gained for the cause of God are not the result of labored argument, ample facilities, wide influence, or abundance of means. They are gained in the audience chamber with God, when with earnest, agonizing faith men lay hold upon the mighty arm of power. True faith and true prayer, how strong they are! They are as two arms by which the human suppliant lays hold upon the power of infinite love. Faith is trusting in God, believing that He loves us and knows what is best for our good. Thus, instead of our own way, it leads us to choose His way. In place of our ignorance, it accepts His wisdom. In place of our weakness, His strength. In place of our sinfulness, His righteousness. Our lives, ourselves, are already His. Faith acknowledges His ownership and accepts its blessing. Truth Uprightness, purity, are pointed out as secrets of life success. It is faith that puts us in possession of these. Every good impulse or aspiration is the gift of God. Faith receives from God the life that alone can produce true growth and efficiency. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John 5.4 it is faith that enables us to look beyond the present with its burdens and cares to the great hereafter, where all that now perplex us shall be made plain. Faith sees Jesus standing as our mediator at the right hand of God. Faith beholds the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for those who love him. Faith sees the robe and crown prepared for the overcomer, and hears the song of the redeemed. Perfect faith, the surrender of self to God, Simple trust in his pledged word should be a part of every minister's experience. Only as a minister has this experience can he make the subject of faith plain to the doubting and distrustful. Faith is not feeling. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. True faith is in no sense allied to presumption. Only he who has true faith is secure against presumption, for a presumption is Satan's counterfeit of faith. Faith claims God's promises and brings forth fruit in obedience. Presumption also claims the promises, but uses them as Satan did to excuse transgression. Faith would have led our first parents to trust the love of God and to obey his commands. Presumption led them to transgress his law believing that his great love would save them from the consequences of their sin. It is not faith that claims the favor of heaven without complying with the conditions on which mercy is to be granted. Genuine faith has its foundation in the promises and provisions of the scriptures. To talk of religion in a casual way, to pray without soul hunger and living faith avails nothing. A nominal faith in Christ, which accepts him merely as the Savior of the world, can never bring healing to the soul. The faith that is unto salvation is not a mere intellectual assent to the truth. He who waits for entire knowledge before he will exercise faith cannot receive blessing from God. It is not enough to believe about Christ. We must believe in him. The only faith that will benefit us is that which embraces him as a personal savior, which appropriates his merits to ourselves. Many hold faith as an opinion, but saving faith is a transaction by which those who receive Christ join themselves in covenant relation with God. Genuine faith is life. A living faith means an increase of vigor, a confiding trust by which the soul becomes a conquering power. Subheading, Unbelief and Doubt Faith takes God at His word not asking to understand the meaning of the trying experiences that come. But there are many who have little faith. They are always fearing and borrowing trouble. Every day they are surrounded by the tokens of God's love. Every day they enjoy the bounties of His providence, but they overlook these blessings. And the difficulties they encounter, instead of driving them to God, separate them from Him by arousing unrest and repining. Do they well to be thus unbelieving? Jesus is their friend. All heaven is interested in their welfare, and their fear and repining grieve the Holy Spirit. 
Not because we see or feel that God hears us are we to believe. We are to trust His promises. When we come to Him in faith, we should believe that every petition enters into the heart of Christ. When we have asked for His blessing, we should believe that we receive it and thank Him that we have it. Then we are to go about our duties assured that the blessing will be sent when we need it most. When we have learned to do this, we shall know that our prayers are answered. God will do for us exceeding abundantly according to the riches of His glory and the working of His mighty power. Ephesians 3, 20, 16, 1, 19. Often the Christian life is beset with dangers and duty seems hard to perform. The imagination pictures impending ruin before and bondage and death behind. Yet the voice of God speaks clearly, Go forward, let us obey the command, even though our sight cannot penetrate the darkness. The obstacles that hinder our progress will never disappear before a halting, doubting spirit. Those who defer obedience till every uncertainty disappears and there remains no risk of failure or defeat will never obey. Faith looks beyond the difficulties and lays hold of the unseen, even omnipotence, therefore cannot be baffled. Faith is the clasping of the hand of Christ in every emergency. The worker for God needs strong faith. Appearances may seem forbidding, but in the darkest hour there is light beyond. The strength of those who in faith love and serve God will be renewed day by day. The understanding of the infinite is placed at their service, that in carrying out his purposes they may not err. Let these workers hold the beginning of their confidence firm unto the end, remembering that the light of God's truth is to shine amid the darkness that enshrouds our world. There is to be no despondency in connection with God's service. The faith of the consecrated worker is to stand every test brought upon it. God is able and willing to bestow upon his servants all the strength they need and to give them the wisdom that their varied necessities demand. He will more than fulfill the highest expectations of those who put their trust in him. Jesus does not call on us to follow him and then forsake us. If we surrender our lives to a service, we can never be placed in a position for which God has not made provision. Whatever may be our situation, we have a guide to direct our way. Whatever our perplexities, we have a sure counselor. Whatever our sorrow, bereavement, or loneliness, we have a sympathizing friend. If in our ignorance we make missteps, Christ does not leave us. His voice, clear and distinct, is heard saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. He shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. Psalms 72, 12. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Isaiah 26, 3. The arm of omnipotence is outstretched to lead us onward and still onward. Go forward, the Lord says, I will send you help. It is for my name's glory that you ask, and you shall receive. Those who are watching for your failure shall yet see my word triumph gloriously. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Matthew twenty-one twenty-two. God never leaves the world without men who can discern between good and evil, righteousness and unrighteousness. He has men whom he has appointed to stand in the forefront of the battle in times of emergency, 